Search and Rescue and the Amway's department has arrived at the crash scene. The noise you hear in the background is either the jaws or the pair of beaks that are being used to cut people out of the car right now. The noise you hear is Life Flight landing at the high school to pick up one or two students from the crash. Life flight is taking off and en route to the hospital with a couple students on board. There was one fatality, and they are loading up the patient and putting him in the back, and we sending him down to the funeral home in Pocatello. They arrived at the hospital and the doctors and the nurses are working on the patient. Oh, the 
Yep. Expose him. I need lab. Need trauma panel. Need a chest, pelvis. He's not paralyzed at this time. Two large bore IVs, one in each AC. There's a second patient as well coming into 18. 18 year old female head on collision. One dead on scene. She is paralyzed from the waist down, not able to move all extremities. Can you lift your right arm for me? No. Can you lift your left leg for me? Patient not moving all four extremities. Mr. Armstrong, I'm Dr. Sandy, so understand. The doctor is talking to one of the patient's dad and saying how bad his son is. And Price is your son? Yes. Okay. Do you know anything about the wreck yet? I just heard that there was a wreck. Okay. Currently there is a bad head on wreck down by the high school. Someone in the car was dead. Um, uh, Price was unconscious at the scene. Okay. And looks like uh, at this point uh, he's not... Uh, he wasn't breathing very well, so we put a tube down his throat. Okay. okay. He's got a pulse. His blood pressure's been good. Heart rate's been good. But he's not moving at all. We did a CAT scan, and he's got just a few swelling in his brain. So let me just bring him in, and we can... Uh, Another doctor talking to another patient's parents, saying how bad she is. So Jensen has sustained a serious injury in this uh, car automobile crash. She has a significant um, cervical spine or neck uh, fracture that has caused a uh, paralysis, quadriplegia. She, her arms and legs, she can't, currently can't move. And it looks like it's it's probably unlikely that she will ever be able to recover from an injury like this. Um, Jess and I have been chatting about what you know the injury and what it means, and uh, what we'll have is we'll have the uh, the surgeons come down and chat with about some potential options. The likelihood of any meaningful recovery uh, of her arms or legs uh, is is poor. Maybe the entire. Uh, injury, if not uh, some of the injuries, uh, could have been lessened or avoided had she been wearing her seatbelt. Well, this is a, a difficult. Okay, parents are at a funeral home, and, and the funeral people are talking to the parents about their son that was dead in the crash. Uh, part of my job, um, and I never know what to say right now. And uh, if, if I had any magic words I, for you, I would have yelled them at you when you walked in the building. And all that we can offer you as our funeral home is just our love and support, and we'll do uh, whatever we can to help your family through this time and give Tyler a meaningful a service, something that would be special for him and then uh, for your family also. So tell me what his full name is. I'm, I'm not going to be able to make any of this better for you guys. I'm just going to try and help you through through this point as much as I can. Uh, if uh, if you're going along, if you guys have a question, at 3 o'clock in the morning, call us. We answer the phones 24 hours a day, and I'd rather have that call in the middle of the night than have you sit up waiting to ask me and think about it. Okay, just call us anytime, and we'll just kind of take things uh, a step at a time right now. Please do not drink and drive, and also do not drive and text, because this could be you and your parents.